more diffusions and it's very different by that. Yeah, thank you. So uh, first of all, I would also like to thank the organizers. I, I never needed a good reason to come to Cambridge, but uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, there are some additional very good reasons like this one to see the, this is of course very nice. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, I uh, would like to talk about uh, uh, some work which we did on, uh, on physical dynamics. So I uh, heard from uh, Peter who made the comment that I'm the only theoretician who's talking before the coherence session. Uh, but uh, what I really would like to, uh, to say is that there could be very uh, much interesting uh, uh, physics going on if you go to the dissipative side of uh, interacting spin systems or interacting uh, uh, uh This is the, the first uh, touch uh, uh, in which my talk will be maybe different from the uh, previous one. And the second one is that um, I will uh, not use so much the idea of using individual patterns uh, and excite them to root works. But I would like to use the concept of mesoscopic spins produced by uh, a Rydberg uh, super. Okay, so uh, why am I interested in all of this field? Uh, basically because we do uh, some uh, work in the last years. Uh, essentially, uh, we are interested in the steady states of open systems. And we are interested in, uh, for example, uh, phase transitions, uh, phases and phase transitions in these systems, which can be either symmetry breaking transition or even topological uh, phase transitions. Uh, I'm not going to talk so much about topological transitions today, but uh, uh, or, um, mainly uh, uh, on that side. So in particular, I want, uh, would like to talk about two subjects. And the first subject is I uh, would like to uh, discuss a dissipative uh, spin lattice. And this spin lattice is facilitated or is made by rootback atoms, optically driven rootback atoms. And uh, 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 I want to argue that uh, these uh, driven rootback atoms are a very nice system to study uh, uh, open systems, interacting open systems, where there is a competition between uh, interactions and single body physics and dissipation. And uh, in fact, I'll talk about uh, 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 one uh, aspect which has become uh, interested there, very interesting there, namely, this is if uh, one drives a Rydberg lattice gas off resonantly, then there have been predictions uh, of uh, a phase transition into a bistable regime, and I would like to uh, look at this a little bit more uh, closely in the first part. And this is, in fact, some work which we did together uh, with an experimental group in Kaiserslautern, uh, the group of uh, Harry Potter. And then in the uh, second part, uh, I uh, want to uh, tell you about the dynamics of defects or dynamics of holes in dissipative spin chains. Turned out, turns out that there is a quite an interesting many body dynamics of uh, these defects uh, in, these, in these chains. And this is some recent work which we did together with uh, David uh, Strossian and we have some archive paper if you are interested. Okay, so, but uh, uh, all of this has to do with uh, root work anti-blockade and excitation facilitation. Uh, so also uh, running the danger of uh, carrying holes to Athens. Let me uh, uh, remind you a little bit about what uh, root work anti-blockade is. So if you consider a uh, Rydberg atom ground state with a, with a Rydberg state and the drive it off resonantly, uh, then the single atom will be excited only with a very, very small probability. Uh, it happens once in a while, but, but not very likely. Now, uh, if, we, uh, if we have, uh, uh, say, two of these uh, atoms, uh, and uh, there's a van der Waals or that or that interaction, uh, then uh, as a function of distance, the uh, doubly excited uh, Rydberg state will just uh, um, uh, uh, the energy will uh, go up when we go to smaller distances. And as a consequence, if we try to excite uh, uh, the two Rydberg atoms at a large distance, essentially nothing happens, or almost nothing happens. The same is true if we go to very small distances, because there we have a Rydberg blockade, and uh, the uh, excited state is shifted uh, so far out of resonance that uh, nothing can happen. But as you can see, there is some space in between where there can be either a two-photon transition into a doubly excited state, or uh, so we can have uh, pairs of excitation, uh, or it turns out to be even more relevant is a cascaded uh, excitation, where with a small probability, the first atom gets excited, and then once the, uh, the first atom is excited, uh, uh, it ha will always find the second one in, in the right uh, uh, distance, uh, which is uh, now uh, shifted into resonance, and then there will be a cascade of uh, uh, interactions running all through this uh, sample of atoms. Now, from that picture, you can already see that uh, some interesting physics can, can go on, namely, <coughs> if we drive uh, off resonantly, we 
can have either the situation where essentially no atom is excited, or once we trigger uh, one uh, atom uh, and this cascade runs through the whole sample, that then uh, you can have uh, the whole sample be excited. And that uh, actually brought up the question, can there be bistability in, in such systems? OK, uh, uh, to make this argument a bit more uh, uh, solid, uh, let me uh, consider um, a model, a very simple formal model, namely a one-dimensional spin lattice, or let's say a Rydberg lattice, <coughs> which is driven by an external uh, user field. There's a type of double interaction, or kind of bar interaction, which we will use to the next few years later. And there's some detuning uh, that shifts in the laser hole of resonance. Now, uh, under the conditions of anti-blocking, namely where the interaction between two neighbors just compensates the tuning, uh, then you can immediately see that this model can be mapped to the uh, transverse field uh, uh, easing model. And, uh, and this transverse uh, field easing model, uh, you may say, is fairly uh, simple. And in particular, if you go in the, into the ferromagnetic phase where the uh, transverse field, which in our case is just a driving laser, is uh, very weak, then the ground state of this, this the system is just a, a, a fully polarized ferromagnetic uh, state. Uh, however, there is some uh, interesting uh, things going on. <coughs> For example, uh, the color gray that I'll have to look what happens after a quench. So if I suddenly uh, change the, uh, uh, the, 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 the field strength, but still stay in the, in the ferromagnetic case. What they found is that after a very long time, uh, the, uh, uh, the average uh, spin polarization actually always goes to zero. So you have an, an equal uh, probability of having finding spins up and down. And the, re the reason for that is uh, also fairly simple. Uh, uh, let's assume that this, this reach is not zero, but, but small. And uh, then the, the, uh, <laughs> the state, uh, the nail state where all spins are down has some energy in not. And if you create one excitation, then we have to provide uh, this uh, uh, interaction energy. But now the interesting thing is, uh, if uh, uh, as soon as this happens, you see that it doesn't cost any energy to add a second, uh, 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 to flip a second spin next to it, and then the uh, next one, uh, uh, next to it, uh, et cetera. So what we see is, as soon as we create two domain walls, such spinons, these spinons basically move through the system very quickly. And as a consequence, uh, on average, you will see that, <coughs> that uh, half of the particles are up and half of the particles are down, and that explains this result. Now, if we add dissipation to the game, then something else can happen, namely um, uh, the excited uh, uh, the spins can uh, flip down. And then you see now there is a competition between uh, this uh, driving process, which basically tends to uh, equilibrate the, uh, uh, this, the spin population, and uh, the decay, which uh, tends to spin the uh, uh, drive the spins down. Now, if you make a mean field uh, 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 analysis of this, uh, 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 of this uh, system, uh, then, and this goes back to some work by, by Igor Ivanovsky, uh, then you find uh, a phase diagram which looks like this. So if, uh, if the, the, the spontaneous decay is very large, then of course all, all the spins essentially go down. And if uh, the uh, driving field running frequency is very large, then the average uh, as, uh, as the magnetization is around zero. <coughs> but then there's a region in between, and in this region, this white region in between, uh, there uh, the mean field uh, predicts by stability. Uh, uh, so it gives a, 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 a solution for the mean uh, uh, magnetization, which has actually uh, two stable and one unstable solution. And uh, there, there, there have been some small system simulations of the system. And uh, what uh, these simulations showed is that indeed, if you crank up the, uh, the laser field, then you, uh, uh, you can uh, you basically move along this line here. Uh, you first are in the, in the system where everything is de-excited. But then you come in a, in, into a situation where uh, there is an, uh, a flipping between a uh, situation where spins are down and spins are excited. But basically, they, they, they work. And then if you drive them very, uh, very strongly, then you go into the regime where basically all spins uh, rotate. And associated with that is an, 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 an appearance of a double peak uh, a number distribution of, of rootwork excitations, a peak at, at close to zero and some uh, um, a, a larger peak reflecting this uh, vice uh, behavior. Now, there have been some experiments in a group of uh, Oliver Morsch and Andrew Arimondo, who actually saw this uh, uh, bimodal uh, excitation uh, distribution. And they were arguing that uh, this is a, a sign for the transition in, into a bistable regime. 
Now, some other experiments in a group of Charles Adams, for example, they actually saw uh, a hysteresis in the optical response of, uh, of the system. And, and all of these were sort of uh, uh, arguments that there could be actually life stability in, uh, uh, in the system. And, uh, and, but then there have been other uh, <coughs> experiments which sort of contradicted this and, and said that maybe there's no, the system is not possible. That was the reason why we uh, set off to uh, look into this a bit more in, in detail. And uh, this is, uh, if you're interested, uh, uh, the paper where uh, these details are uh, 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 Let me first of all uh, uh, take a step back and let me uh, say a few general words about what means by stability. If you have an open system, uh, which is described by a Liouvillian Lindblad equation, and then uh, what the equivalent of, an, of the energy spectrum for a Hamiltonian is for a, a Lindbladian is a damping spectrum. Uh, and these are the real parts of the eigenvalues of the, uh, uh, of the Lindbladian. And what they actually determine is the rate uh, at which the system goes into the uh, steady state. <coughs> now, typically, um, these uh, rates here depend on the system size uh, L. So if you make the system smaller or, or larger, then they, they, they can change. <coughs> and you always have uh, one state with an eigenvalue 0, because this is a steady state. But then there could be a second state <coughs> separated from the spectrum of all others, which decay very fast. And uh, this state here, uh, the, the eigenvalue, could approach uh, the uh, or, or, or decrease uh, uh, when you increase the system size. Uh, this I would call a metastable situation uh, because uh, most of the ex excited states dec decay very quickly into the, into the steady state, but some of them have a long lifetime and stick for a long time. And in contrast to that, uh, bistability means that one of these eigenvalues, uh, the thermodynamic limit where the uh, system size goes to infinity, actually becomes degenerate with the uh, uh, steady state. In that case, we have really two degenerate steady states, and that's what I call uh, 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 bistability. Uh, and uh, if, we want, if we are interested in, a fit, in, in, in seeing some phase transitions, then actually we need uh, to go into this regime of, uh, of now, uh, uh, there's some, actually some nice work in the group of Mark uh, Garahan and, and also Peter Zanowski who discuss uh, the, uh, uh, what uh, meta stability basically means. What it says is that if I start with any sort of initial state, uh, 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 then uh, I will very quickly run into one of the two uh, superpositions of the true ground state, or the true steady state, and this uh, uh, first excited state and uh, they will uh, live for a very long time, and only at a very, very long time, uh, essentially, everything goes back to uh, the state of the Now, um, I, I, I would like now to make uh, one argument. Uh, I would like to sh show you that if the system is truly bistable, then we need long-range correlations. And uh, since this argument is very simple, I uh, thought I'd I, uh, 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 walk you through this. Uh, so let us assume that our system has two uh, steady states, so a two false degenerate steady state, O0 and O0 uh, 1 and O0 2. So in general, the steady state will be some convex um, um, convolution of the two, where the uh, probability p here depends essentially on the initial state. And but if we say that we have two different uh, steady states, then we assume that there is some local observable where we can tell the one from the other. Right, so now, now let's, uh, without loss of uh, generality, let's assume that we measure some local quantity, uh, let's say xj, and in one state it, it has a value plus one, and the other state has the value minus one. <coughs> now, uh, if you construct the quantity, which is basically uh, the, uh, 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 the correlation, uh, the uh, cross correlation of, uh, uh, of these uh, uh, observables, then uh, by construction, the, the expectation value of this y here is a positive quantity. Now, uh, by uh, simple uh, uh, algebra, uh, uh, it's uh, 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 simple uh, uh, triangular inequality, we know that the sum of these, of these pair uh, uh, expectation values is larger than the sum of the two, uh, 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 of the two uh, uh, expectation values. And if you take the expectation value in one or the other of the two uh, steady states, then this one here is always 
plus one, and this is always uh, also always plus one, or this one is minus one, and this is also minus one. So both uh, come up to uh, L, and so the product is L squared. <coughs> if you take this general steady state instead, so we have a convex uh, uh, um, uh, a convex sum of, of one uh, of one and the other, then uh, we have uh, uh, the expectation value in one of the two, the two states and one of the, the other. And uh, uh, just by making use of this, one finds that this is larger than L squared. Uh, and uh, as a consequence, if I now uh, uh, take uh, fix one of the two uh, uh, coordinates, say, uh, at zero, and uh, look at the sum of these uh, uh, cumulants or the, the correlations uh, of this, uh, uh, this first index zero, second index uh, k, then I find that this has to be larger than L times something which in general is non-zero. This is only possible if the correlations are infinitely long range, because otherwise the sum, if there's an exponential decay, the sum will always be finite, and uh, it will never scale with the system size. So this simple proof essentially says that if the system is bistable, we have to have long range correlations. Now, since the, the, uh, 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 the speed of sound or the speed at which correlations can, can propagate in any system is finite, it also says that we have to have diverging correlation. <coughs> okay, so uh, this was basically the, the starting argument, uh, and uh, we, uh, not we, but the group, the experimental group of Harry uh, they set up uh, an experiment. So they had a, a 3D uh, optical lattice <coughs> with about 20,000 Rupert atoms and put them in a mock insulator and uh, then shined uh, a CD uh, laser light on it, <coughs> so uh, excited it uh, off resonantly, and then detected uh, essentially the uh, uh, ions, which gives an indication of excited uh, root of atoms. And one can do this for very long times, so or over a couple of uh, hundred milliseconds, in fact, until uh, 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 all the uh, atoms are gone. And they, they uh, uh, measured the two-time correlation function and extracted essentially two parameters, namely g2 at, uh, at zero and uh, uh, the, the correlation time of this, uh, of this form. So this is actually the uh, view of the, of, of the experiment. <coughs> and uh, uh, so these are uh, data for the correlation times and uh, g2 as a function of uh, both the tuning and the strength of, of, uh, uh, the, of the laser field. And um, uh, I don't want to go uh, through the details, but, <coughs> but it's clear that if you go to very high uh, tuning, the correlation times basically levels off to the single particle uh, uh, decay time, because that's the only time scale uh, in the game. Uh, but if we are uh, closer to resonance, we see that the correlation time uh, indeed grows, but it stays finite. And <coughs> uh, similar arguments can be made for the, uh, for the bunching. And uh, we did some uh, uh, simulations. Uh, using uh, rate equations. So we first uh, verified that uh, the rate equation approximation in this uh, situation of uh, uh, large uh, phasing is valid. And uh, so we uh, did these simulations, and although they are quantitatively, as you can easily see, uh, not exactly on top, they give the, 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 uh, give the right uh, uh, scaling behavior of, uh, 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 of uh, correlation times and the bunch. And uh, in fact, one can. Uh, the nice thing about uh, about this system is that one can also get some analytic understanding of what's going on. In the system. And uh, in order to get such an uh, uh, understanding, one can make up an effective uh, 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 model, an effective cluster model. <coughs> and uh, the uh, the processes which can go on are the following. I mean, suppose look at a one-dimensional lattice of uh, atoms in the ground state. Then, with a very small probability, with some rate which we call seed rate, uh, which is essentially given by the off resonant excitation probability of the two level atom, uh, once in a while the Rupert atom can be uh, created. Now, if the Rupert atom is uh, created uh, and uh, the interaction is just uh, tuned in such a way that it compensates the tuning for the, na uh, 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 the nearest neighbors, then what, what happens uh, uh, next is that either this neighbor or this neighbor uh, get very quickly excited <coughs> and there's a facilitation rate which, uh, uh, which has now this, this uh, much uh, reduced uh, 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 tuning due to the interactions. So this will be a very fast process. And, 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 but then, of course, at some point, uh, an, an atom, an excited root atom, uh, uh, oh, maybe I should say one more thing. 
that if a Rydberg atom is surrounded by two other excited Rydberg atoms, it cannot be de-excited by the laser light because it's again out of resonance. Right? So it basically sticks. So all the physics which is going on here is always only at the edges. Uh, unless a spontaneous emission happens, and if spontaneous emission happens, which again is on a slow time scale, then the atom can be de-excited, and then we create a hole uh, inside, of this, uh, uh, inside this chain. And again, this hole cannot be filled, because now there are two neighbors, which again shift this, uh, uh, the resonance of this atom in the center out of resonance. <coughs> one is exactly, uh, one is enough to, to tune it into resonance, but two shift it out of now, uh, all of this, one can uh, uh, make a uh, 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 model which uh, basically uh, uh, has the following features. So this here is the cluster size, meaning the number of excitations. And uh, on that axis, that is in the number of uh, uh, domains which we have, which are separated by, uh, an, empty, uh, by an empty side. And uh, uh, <coughs> one can then easily uh, uh, see what's going on. There's this seed process which comes from zero excitation to one excitation. That is if uh, the facilitation dynamics uh, and uh, we have uh, spontaneous processes uh, going on. And uh, if we uh, take all of them uh, together, we can make up a very simple uh, uh, effective model. And this effective model now basically describes the evolution along the, uh, um, the one-dimensional uh, manifold uh, of the number of excitations. So I uh, move, basically make a random walk here uh, uh, along this um, uh, one-dimensional uh, effective, uh, 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 effective one-dimensional model uh, labeling the number of feedback excitations which we have in the game. Now, uh, if we take the, uh, if we t uh, calculate, for example, the correlation times, uh, so the time until the second order correlation function goes back to its, uh, 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 back to one, um, and we can do this either by uh, full numerical simulations or by this effective cluster model, and you see that uh, uh, works uh, quite perfectly. And out of this uh, cluster model, we can calculate uh, what the correlation length is uh, doing as a function of system size. And, and uh, so <coughs> two things become here obvious. The first thing is correlation times are always finite in the system. They never diverge. Second, uh, the second thing is that the correlation length uh, also does not diverge. It stays finite in, in, in these, uh, uh, under these conditions and, and this open system. So, um, and, and the conclusion from there is that most likely there is no transition into a, uh, into a bistable regime. Uh, but then you could ask the question, well, what about the fact that in an experiment that people have seen this uh, bimodal distribution, and what about the fact that they have seen the hysteresis? Now, uh, a bimodal distribution, uh, you can always see if the system size is uh, less than the, uh, than the correlation length, because then the meta-stable situation and the bi-stable situation cannot be distinguished. But then as soon as, as your uh, uh, system size exceeds the correlation length, then just by, by, uh, uh, by uh, um, uh, the law of big numbers, you will always end up with a, uh, uh, with a Gaussian distribution <coughs> because you have independent patches uh, which don't talk to each other. Uh, likewise, if you look at the hysteresis, uh, and one has to be a bit careful because uh, the, uh, the one indication would be to look for the area of this uh, uh, of this uh, of the hysteresis. And naively, one would expect if uh, the sweep time here is comparable to the correlation time, then the uh, the area should uh, uh, go to zero, it should vanish. Uh, in fact, it turns out if one looks a bit more careful, one finds that this area uh, actually only scales um, uh, polynomially, and that means that one really has to go to very long sweep times in order not to see the, uh, uh, the history. If you do it on a too short time scale, you will always end up seeing this, even if you do it on a time scale which is comparable to this. Okay, so uh, the uh, uh, bottom line from this, uh, from this is, I think that uh, under at least the experimental conditions which, uh, which uh, uh, we looked at, that there is no uh, viability in the system, but the system is really only uh, meta stable, and therefore, for example, there can't be uh, a true phase transition, uh, 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 true phase transition. Um, now, before I come to the second part of my, uh, of my talk, um, I uh, uh, want to make a few comments of, uh, on uh, uh, an effective type of spins which we are using. 
uh, which are not stable atoms, but uh, uh, look like uh, super atoms. Now, you have seen this uh, all the time, this, the, the, uh, uh, if, if you want to uh, resonantly excite uh, 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 an atom into a Rydberg state, then below this blockade radius, this is no longer possible. And as a consequence, if you have very many atoms which are contained in a volume whose size is sufficiently uh, small compared to the blockade radius, then you can, uh, you can create only one excitation uh, in this whole sample and, uh, and uh, never more, uh, not more of them. And uh, uh, this, uh, 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 this uh, collection of atoms, which are confined to the small region, they then call the superatom simply because the probability of uh, absorbing and emitting a photon is enhanced by the square of the number of atoms. In now, uh, these uh, superatoms can be uh, put together uh, into a lattice, and uh, in, in this way, one can actually create effective spins because each superatom behaves as a two level system. Uh, and the, the nice thing is, or the, the, the alternative to what we heard this morning from Terry's talk, is uh, the regular filling uh, with an array of uh, superatoms is much simpler because you're not looking for the statistics of individual atoms, because you have really an uh, ensemble of, of atoms and you can fill uh, 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 an array of, uh, uh, of micro traps, uh, for example, uh, with them. The second thing is that, uh, to some extent, these uh, superatoms are even insensitive to particle loss, because if you lose an atom, uh, what happens is that the interaction strength with the, uh, uh, with the light field changes from square root of n to square root of n minus 1, but the, super uh, but the spin is not gone. So this is uh, maybe another uh, 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 advantage of uh, using superatoms. I would like to uh, make a little bit of advertising for, for, for this approach. And the way uh, this is created in the lab is uh, essentially by uh, uh, using um, uh, uh, optical lattices and then using an electron beam to, uh, 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 to remove uh, atoms from certain sites uh, in order to create, for example, a single superatom only beam. Array of, uh, of these super <coughs> And um, well, uh, uh, we have done some, uh, they have done some experiments and we have done some simulations for that just to really see that uh, these uh, super atoms uh, uh, behave in the way they, they should. So, what is measured here, for example, is the uh, G2 function, which shows, shows a very strong anti bunching, uh, uh, which really shows that there's only a single excitation uh, in this super atom. Okay, the, the nice thing about superatoms um, uh, uh, versus uh, single atoms is one more effect, namely, if there is now some dephasing, then what's going to happen is that the, uh, the, 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 the electromagnetic field couples the ground state only to the symmetric state of single excitations. Uh, and uh, so that is uh, just a two-level system which would do Rabi oscillations. But now, due to uh, the dephasing, uh, the, the symmetric state is coupled to all the other non-symmetric states. And in this way, uh, it is possible to actually uh, invert uh, the, uh, um, the, uh, 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 the, uh, the superatom and uh, uh, to, to fully polarize it by just shining uh, the, C, uh, the CW uh, laser light uh, on the system. And uh, this can then actually be mapped to a simple, you know, the other advantage is that it can be mapped to a simple radiation model, which for many of the uh, uh, simulations is much easier. And, uh, <coughs> okay, and in fact, uh, for relevant situations, one can easily prove that uh, by comparing an exact uh, solution to the radiation. The radiation is are uh, quite, quite good. Okay, so uh, what I now would like to uh, tell you about is something which we found, which uh, we found quite interesting. This name is uh, the dynamics of holes in a dissipative uh, spin chain. So uh, what we are looking at is uh, a one-dimensional chain of uh, these mesoscopic spins, so to say these look like superatoms, and they are optically excited of resonantly, so uh, typically uh, not much happens, only with a very small probability uh, one of these superatoms gets excited. But as soon as one of these superatoms gets excited, the next one is, is uh, uh, moved into resonance, and then uh, you can see the cascade of excitations. Uh, if you simulate this, or if we did some simulations on that, and then what we found is <coughs> that uh, if the, uh, uh, the ratio of the interaction strengths to the line width uh, becomes large, then the density of holes approaches one third. 
that seems to be a very universal thing. That we find always one the, the, the identity of defects. So there will be defects in the system. Not all of the Rydberg atoms have a, a, a seemingly universal value of one third. The second thing is what we found is we calculate the correlation functions of these holes. Then we realize that they uh, mimic uh, the liquid behavior. Uh, but the interesting part of it is that the two particle correlation is not only zero at uh, zero distance, simply because there cannot be two holes on top of each other, but it's also zero at, 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 at the distance of one. So uh, uh, these holes uh, 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 appear like a liquid which has a certain size. Where, where, where each of these holes has a, has a certain, uh, uh, takes a certain volume. Now, uh, how can we uh, <coughs> understand that and uh, these features? <coughs> and for this, uh, we, we can derive uh, also some simple effective model for these holes. Uh, so for this, let's have a look uh, how can um, uh, defects uh, be uh, uh, created or, uh, 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 or annihilated. Um, so if we have a situation like this, where we have two uh, 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 spins de-excited next to each other, then we see that, that there is a very strong, very fast uh, process of, uh, 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 of facilitation. So uh, this atom moves this one into resonance, so very quickly uh, this is filled. Uh, this one cannot be filled because it has uh, two neighbors, which means a whole of resonance. Now, there's also the similar process goes in the other direction. Uh, it is a de-excitation process, but the de-excitation process is much weaker. The reason why it's much weaker is because uh, uh, we have this decoherence, uh, which brings us from the symmetric state to all of these non-symmetric states, which do not couple with the electromagnetic field, and therefore this is uh, reduced by the factor of essentially the number of atoms that we so, that, so this process exists, but it's, <laughs> it, it's weak. And the other process, which is also weak and maybe even comparable uh, uh, to that one, is just spontaneous emission. Now, all of this, one can uh, <coughs> look into, uh, one can make a little uh, diagram like this, and let me walk you through this. So, suppose we start <coughs> with the configuration where all uh, atoms are in the Rydberg state, then the only thing which can happen is that spontaneous emission brings you uh, and creates some uh, some. Things. Now, once there are some holes, then uh, 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 with, a, uh, uh, with a very small, very weak rate, we can excite a second hole, for example, next to it. Or that's the emission, we can excite uh, a hole on, on, on that side. Uh, but as soon as we have two holes next to each other, uh, they, 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 will, they will be refilled by the facilitation process. So we have a very fast process going this way and this way. So these big arrows essentially show uh, the processes which are facilitated, which are fast, and uh, all the, the other arrows are the, uh, are the, uh, the slow ones, what you the emission or the uh, uh, um, downward uh, um, facilitation uh, process. Uh, these are the slow ones and these are the fast ones. Now you can see that uh, uh, since if, if these processes are very fast, we can just eliminate, uh, adiabatically eliminate these, uh, uh, these configurations out of, the, uh, out of the game because we get a very quick process going here, coming back, going here, coming uh, going, going here, going here, and then coming back. So if we do that, then uh, we are left uh, with an effective model, which contains exactly three processes. Namely, creation of a hole <coughs> by the solution, the annihilation of the hole. The way the, the, the hole can be annihilated is the following one. Uh, if you have uh, two holes next to each other, then the one in the center could, by spontaneous emission, uh, decay. Now we have three of them, and now uh, the facilitation process kicks in and uh, 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 brings us over here, for example. And uh, now the second facilitation process can, can come in and, and, and uh, go back to this case. So what, what this effectively means is that two of these holes, which can come together, they can annihilate in, a, in, a, uh, 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 in this process and uh, end up in a, in a situation where there's only one uh, hole left. So uh, this whole many body dynamics of these holes is now um, a competition between these two processes, creation and annihilation. And then it also can be transport, because if you uh, um, uh, 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 see here, then you can, via this channel, the hole can move from, uh, from this side uh, to the next side. So that's also uh, the transport. <coughs> and uh, the interesting thing about these uh, processes are, is that uh, the uh, creation 
can only happen if the neighboring sides of a hole uh, are not a hole. Uh, then uh, the, the hole can, create, uh, can be created. And the, uh, likewise, the, the unaeration uh, 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 is a process which takes two uh, um, uh, holes and uh, uh, puts it into one. And as a consequence of this uh, interplay between these two processes, we see that these, um, that these holes behave as hard rods. Uh, as hard rods uh, which have a finite size, namely uh, the size of uh, uh, three uh, level sides. And uh, at the same time, we have a strong driving uh, 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 of the root plugs into the excited state, and this results into this uh, uh, whole uh, density of uh, one third. Now, there's also transport, and this transport actually, uh, uh, as a consequence of the transport, uh, we will see the liquid behavior. <coughs> now, uh, if, one, uh, if one calculates the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the full model, so if one compares the full numerical simulation with this effective model, so you see they, are, uh, they fall almost completely on top of each other. So this, this, this simple effective model describes the physics very well. And uh, you may not be surprised if we uh, compare this to a um, hard rod uh, that is with, uh, with this uh, rod size, uh, then you see that it also fits uh, very well. So this effective uh, model does describe essentially uh, hard rods to uh, uh, hard rod that now there's one more interesting thing, namely, um, if suppose we could switch off the transport of these holes just by hand, I and mean, I can tell you in this discussion session uh, what ideas we have in order to do that. Now, if we would switch off transport, then it turns out that there is only one stable configuration. I mean, there's a stable configuration where there are holes every third side. In such a configuration, no hole can be created because, for example, if, if, if uh, this atom here uh, 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 undergoes spontaneous emission, it will be re immediately be refilled by the facilitation process. Also, uh, uh, this hole cannot be filled because these two uh, <laughs> atoms at the side move it out of uh, resonance. So uh, this is a, a stable configuration. And, uh, and the, the, the distance between the holes is exactly three lattice sides explaining the density of one third, and uh, one would uh, uh, find a Mandel Q parameter of the uh, uh, of the rules of uh, minus one. Now, if we add some transport, then uh, these uh, holes can move around, and then eventually they can uh, annihilate, and that leads, gives rise to some number fluctuations. Uh, but uh, surprisingly, we find that the whole density, even if we tune the transport rate and make it very small or make it very large, the, 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 the whole density stays almost uh, 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 at the level of uh, one third. And the Mandel Q parameter, uh, uh, also in the in for large uh, transport, stays very small. It's, it's much below uh, the, the minus 0 0.8, so it's a very subcourse only, very strongly suppressed uh, number of um, And if we look at the uh, correlation functions and change the transport uh, 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 rate versus the equation rate, for example, <laughs> then we see if we make the transport going down to zero, so we go to this side, then we end up in a crystalline phase uh, with, an, with, this, uh, 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 with a spacing of uh, three lattice sides, uh, and, um, and this can be seen for example, in the correlation amplitude at, at this point, which uh, grows up here at, at, uh, at this phase. While if you go into the other direction, uh, we end up into a liquid phase, which, uh, interestingly enough, has a peak of the two particle uh, correlation functions, not at distance uh, 3, but at distance 2. So there's an interesting crossover between the liquid phase and the crystalline phase of, uh, uh, of these two excitations. OK, so let me summarize. Um, uh, I uh, talked about these two things, namely, Excitation facilitation and uh, dissipative uh, uh, spin systems or Rydberg systems, and uh, I hope I've convinced you that bistability uh, can only exist if there are long-range correlations. But what we find for typical experimental conditions is that both uh, correlation times and also correlation lengths stay finite, uh, and that can actually be well described and understand understood by an effective uh, cluster model. So the conclusion is that uh, these systems are typically uh, metastable, and all that you observe really depends on uh, the size, your, uh, the, the, the ratio of your system size to the uh, uh, correlation length. And the second uh, uh, subject, we talked about whole dynamics, I've talked about whole dynamics, 
I showed that these holes in, in this uh, one week chain uh, 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 represent to very good approximation of hard rod liquid with a universal density of one third and suppressed uh, number of fluctuations. And if you put the switch off the uh, transport, you could see a, a transition between uh, liquid and uh, crystalline order. And uh, so before I stop, I would like to send the work. Uh, and also, it's also here in the audience, did most of the work, and then the our experimental uh, uh, colleagues and uh, uh, collaborators on this. I would like to thank you for your attention and open for questions. Space there, you can take any quantum superposition between these two, I and mean, you have sort of the classical mixture here. It's actually stable, it's sort of, in so this sense, it would be interesting for this ability to quantum error correction. For example, that by this kind of anticipation, you keep things within a certain Hilbert space. So, in that sense, you would have the steady state, which is not only the mixture of the two density matrices, but you would have sort of you know, many superpositions that would actually be dark and would be possible steady states, including the pure states. So if I had a, a qubit, you know, it would not be one spin down and the other one up as a mixture, but I would be able to preserve a steady state, uh, sort of superposition of them, and you would be able to get five state situations that have quantum coherences between them. Yes, and the problem there is uh, it will not be, I'm not quite sure whether I talk about the same thing. Uh, uh, if it's bistable, of course, you could have two uh, uh, two uh, pure states, as, as uh, and, and then any coherent superposition of them would be a, a, a steady state. Is that what you what you have to mind? Yes, okay. but in your case, this would be completely defaced because you got a classical mixture of the two situations. That's right, but I mean uh, the uh, um, I mean that's not quite true because I can. Uh, I mean, if you start in the superposition between the two bi-state situation. You keep the off diagonal elements because this is what your steady state is. You have classic mixtures of the two situations. And I'm asking, can you generalize your pi stability to something that also preserves or allows for quantum coherence? Um, yeah, I'm not can I realize this in this system? Um, this I, um, I don't know. I mean, of course, you can have. The situation where you have a decoherence from subspace. And uh, that's, I, I guess, what you want to introduce is two dimensional. This is what you want to do. Yes, but I want this to be larger in your context. So, not the two classical situations, but any superposition in your. What do you say? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I can imagine that, but I, can, I, can, I, can I tell you now a recipe of how to? Create them. If that's your question, I cannot say this either. Uh, well, I, I, I guess I could, but that's sort of a bit of trivial. So if, if, I, if I just make a, a, a Raman, an optical pumping transition, which has uh, uh, that, that, that state, just to degree of no, you would like to do this thing in a many body situation. In a many body situation? Yeah, okay. But that's that's really good. So you have a problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, so concerning your second part, uh, where you have this uh, classification mechanism, which leads, for example, to this whole uh, and so on. So, so when you explain the classification mechanism, you just go in this picture where you say, okay, I have a pair of atoms, and they set the resonance, or so you have a faster excitation, for example, and so on. Uh, then, so, I mean, for example, we did the experiments uh, in our group trying to see that in a clean chain and uh, this regular spacing between the atoms and so on. It turns out it was very difficult because we always have a bit of randomness in the positions, and the one over R to the six uh, uh, behavior of the random uh, means that fulfilling your resonance conditions is extremely demanding because uh, you need half your distance atoms uh, very closely defined. So have you considered that in your model? Because I guess with super atoms you have even more uh, 
uh, like position in randomness and so on, or is it something that is somehow compensated for by the fact that you are in this dissipative regime? Or? I mean, uh, for the for the super atoms, of course, you have uh, uh, um, you have an averaging of what this exists, so you can produce an additional line width if you, if you want uh, by by the fact that that you are uh, exciting in, in the cloud of atoms, which is a finite size. Now, what you're saying about the, the, uh, um, the about the sensitivity uh, uh, versus uh, the tuning that very much again depends on what your line width is of the of, uh, of the transition. Uh, so if your line width is large, then you can afford to have uh, uh, quite some uh, position uncertainty without having, without creating any problem. So it, it may depend. In that case, the line is given by the phase In this case, it is uh, given by, by the phasing that, that That's uh, what, what, is, what is dominating. And, uh, and there, uh, the, it is not that, not that sensitive. It is really just a matter of a uh, question of, of how to compare this situation. Is the phasing somehow artificially used? Or where does it come from? Yeah. Well, I guess that's a, some, some of the question which maybe is going to be addressed in the debating uh, the coherence session. Uh, I, I think this, this issue where, where the phasing in this, in this uh, system comes from is, at least as far as I understood, is not completely resolved. Uh, there are many, many things which is something kind of special about this. Usually it's not like this in the experiments. That's not true. In the experiments which, which we have done in our, the, our people have done in the, in the, in the lab uh, one there, okay. it's not it, it, yeah, yeah, it, it seemed to, to uh, dominate. I don't have them. You, you know the numbers or whatever you have. Uh, you can even swear in the experiment. Uh, so, uh, anyway, so, so uh, what we found is that the, that the uh, um, uh, radiation simulations fit very well to what we see in the experiment. And um, well, there can be very many, many things, I mean, including just motion of, of atoms, because you excite to, a, to the gradient of a, of a, uh, of a potential, and then the atoms get accelerated. And there are all sorts of, of, of things which can contribute to, to the physics. Um, I think there's no final. So is there some interesting transition to go into coherent Oh, certainly. Uh, I mean, um, the, the, what, I would like, what, what I wanted to advertise is that, uh, uh, that even if uh, you're not able to solve the coherence questions, which will be subject of the, of the, the, session, the session tonight, I think there's uh, quite some interesting uh, physics going on in, the, uh, in, in this other region. Um, if, if you wanted to, to see uh, the coherent dynamics, and we have to go to shorter time scales, and we have to go to uh, uh, to other processes like the, the mixing of, of uh, two different reflex states and all this stuff we have uh, out uh, this morning, so very definitely. But then the theoretical description, of course, gets very, very complicated uh, right away. So the good thing about the, the, the phase situation is that you can do uh, classical modicality. Any other yeah, just maybe no. I'm sorry. Let me ask you because I think so. So, there, so can you? I'm sort of wondering what's the connection between today's talk and the first part of your talk? Because basically, in your first part in, in your model, you, you neglect these kind of processes. And in reality, you know, as we learn from trade, you can just not ignore them. Well, so, the, the nice thing about at least the cell is that and, right, and, and I'm just kind of start with this cascading from the church, it right? reduced by stability for sure. And well, I don't know how to go to you will reduce this kind of, you know, by uh, 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 model behavior. Uh, the, I, uh, the, the thing, I mean, I would actually like, you see, I was connecting the first part of my talk to Trace to achieve more. Let me give you the second one because that, that is probably easier to, to address. Um, the, uh, you see in, this, in the super atom the picture, due to the phasing, you anyway get uh, always transitions from the uh, state which you optically excite into some other state, which still have uh, uh, Van der Waals uh, interactions. So if you think of replacing this by a black body transition into a, in, into a, a different state, uh, of course, as soon as you get transport of excitation, 
SP flipping, that's a different story. But if you get uh, a black body uh, 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 or some other process bringing you into another rootback state, which still has uh, the uh, uh, rootback interaction, it does not change much to this picture. Right. The interactions must change if you want to if, if you get this flip flop interaction, then, then you, you get a new type of interaction. But there are two effects. Right? And then if you go into, an, uh, into another uh, rootwork state, uh, there, there's the Van der Waals uh, interaction and, and the flip flop. Um, if it's only the, the Van der Waals, it doesn't really change much on, on, on this picture uh, because all what you do is you, you uh, modify essentially these, uh, uh, these rates. So a lot of this could actually survive some of these things which. Although it seems that the problem is the black body always couples opposite parity states. So it's, it's the states that you produce have, or by definition, have the exchange. Right, but you could go, uh, typically you, uh, you, what, what, what you think can happen is that you go cascaded processes, and then there are no direct but double matrix elements anymore between the uh, between your, 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 your uh, S state, which you optically excite, and all the other uh, root works where this trickles into. And then, the, then what is left over is, is essentially the, the, uh, the uh, Direction, the, the direct process is, is suppressed. But you, but you go through the dipole. You go through this. this uh, that's true. That's true. So, and, uh, and so this all happens on dipole. The call of this experiment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the, the whole experiment it is done on, on a couple of hundred millisecond uh, time scales. Yeah. I mean, all the way. Uh, but, but of course, the correlation times which are measured are still in the microsecond uh, uh, you can see. So the typical correlation times are here, uh, in this case, maybe 100 microseconds. So what's the principal function number? This is uh, 25. Uh, this is, a, also, this is a single photon. No, I, I, I didn't say this. This is a single photon transition into into uh, the and the so this time scale. Uh, this one with uh, on, this is the, the correlation time, which is on, now here. It's about uh, 100, uh, 100 microseconds, maybe. Reading off from from that paper, uh, from from this curve. But then the lifetime, in the whole experiment, is, is, can be done over times of uh, 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 100 milliseconds. Uh, uh, because, I mean, after 100 milliseconds, of course, you're at the 